Now, welcome back to the program. Uh, we're going to talk about juice now, but uh, not the uh, drinking variety. We're going to talk about Jupiter Icy Moons Explorer. And I'm delighted to have uh, Shawnee Morris here in studio, an expert uh, on all matters uh, space exploration. <laughs> Good morning, uh, Shawnee. Good morning. You know what? That's a nice change because normally I'm introduced by your other counterpart, yeah. Will, as the space cadet. The space cadet. <laughs> <laughs> so today yeah. I'm an expert. You yeah. are, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> We've got up in the world, literally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us first of all, just put uh, before we get talking about the actual exploration, uh, because I know it was cancelled uh, initially, but it will eventually take off. Yes. But uh, in terms of Jupiter's location, uh, like we we know our planets and so on in organisation. So you've got the Sun, you've got Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, uh, Mars, and then, and then Jupiter. Jupiter. Yeah. But but the distances between them all are v- very, very vast. Right. Uh, you know, when doing outreach, and you could try to explain this to, you know, into context. Uh, we, as Earth, lie roughly 152 million kilometres away from the sun. Jupiter is roughly 740 million kilometres away from the sun. Okay. So the sunlight that we see today, it's a lovely sunny day looking out the window. We're seeing that light as it left the sun eight minutes and 40 seconds ago. Okay. Jupiter won't see that for another 38 minutes, okay. 37, 37 minutes or so. Yeah, so Germ- uh, Jupiter is roughly 43, 44 light minutes away from the sun. We're only eight. Okay, and what has been done in terms of exploration before this towards the Jupiter direction? Because wasn't there one to Neptune years and years ago? And yeah, so well, you, you know, yeah. like uh, you've had the Voyager missions that yeah. with the a coincidental alignment of Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune, we had Voyagers 1 and 2 go on out there. They were the first big ones that mm. went out. Before that, there was the Pioneer 10 and 11. They visited Jupiter and Saturn as well uh, in the mid-70s. Uh, since then, uh, in, launched in the late 80s and arriving in the 90s was Galileo that okay. did a very um, long mission, albeit like having one hand tied behind its back because the main antenna had failed to deploy during its travel to Jupiter. So it had the smaller antenna to, tra- to send all that data okay. and it was using tape recorder at the time as well. Oh my god, okay. Sort of, yeah. <laughs> uh, currently, since 2016, we've got Juno that's been going around in very broad, highly elliptical orbits around Jupiter, taking some tremendously fantastic, I, I can't even find the right words, yeah. of photographs of Jupiter's clouds. And we're, we found a lot more data about the cloud structure and the atmospheric structure of Jupiter since then. And what's coming up now are two more missions. Today, hopefully at quarter past one Irish time, we'll have the launch of the Jupiter Icy Moons Explorer from French Guiana. It's in the European Space Agency mission. Okay. What and happened the, to what happened to that? It didn't take off yesterday. While weather was quite good, there was the high risk of lightning. Uh, so you know when you've got a very very large rocket carrying tens of tons of liquid oxygen and kerosene, and it's you know lightning is not your you friend. Do not want electricity <laughs> like that. Okay. No, you don't. So today uh, it's been put off to the same time. It has that launch window. Yeah. Uh, and by the way, in twenty twenty four, next October, there's another mission to Jupiter, uh, called the Europa Clipper. And that's going to work in tandem. That's by NASA. That's going to work in tandem with the JUICE mission when they both get there. Okay. So Clipper will actually get there ahead of JUICE in 2031. JUICE will arrive in 2033. Sorry, okay. in 2031. Uh, Clipper is two years before that. All right, okay. Yes, yes, yeah. Okay. Um, How come it's... Uh, is this, uh, would it not have taken uh, a little bit shorter? Could they not speed yeah. it up a bit? It's well, a long time to be waiting. Correct. But JUICE's mission is going to be very specific that it has to have enough fuel when it gets to Jupiter. When this launches, or if it launches today, but when eventually it does leave Earth orbit, it's going to go on a couple of flyby missions between Earth, Venus, Earth, Moon, Earth, and yet gravity assists each time. And as it does that, it's going to speed up. Oh. And the final Earth pass, the third one, is when it gets that really good gravity assist slingshot and throws it in Jupiter's direction. Oh, right. And it's, the whole process will take eight years, but saves almost all of the fuel that it's leaving Earth with. All right. So it's going to literally be catapulted towards... Um, literally, yes, yeah. catapulted. Uh, the, whereas the Europa Clipper will have a bit more of a direct route. Okay. NASA is taking that route. Uh, but it is also a far more expensive mission as a result. The European Space Agency, of which Ireland is a contributing member, okay. uh, is doing it on a little bit of a budget, okay. but it is determined to make it work. So anyway, the eight years have passed. 
juice gets out there to Jupiter, what happens next? Yes. It's going to insert itself in an orbit around Jupiter, and it's going to pay particularly close attention to three of the four Galilean moons. You know, you've got Io, Europa, Callisto, and Ganymede. Uh, Ganymede is the largest moon, natural satellite, in the solar system. It's bigger than Mercury. Callisto is the next one. It's roughly the size of Mercury. Europa is next. It's smaller than Mercury, but still one of the biggest in the solar system. But those three show signs from Juno's mission, Galileo, and Voyagers 1 and 2 that they have ice on the surface. Okay. What do you need to make ice? You need a liquid. Oh, yes. And it has to be frozen. It could be liquid water. It could be liquid methane. We're not entirely sure, but the signs indicate on Europa that it has water, frozen okay. water. But the ice sheet could be anything from 60 to 120 kilometers thick. Okay. So that could be preserving something down there, just like Lake Vostok in Russia and Siberia had this ice pack whereby you go down tens or hundreds of meters before you hit water underneath that, that has not seen or breathed the atmosphere of Earth for potentially 200 to 300,000 years, or maybe even more, right. you know? Uh, so these things on Callisto, Ganymede in Europa, they may be able to have the conditions that life could be there, but JUICE's mission is not to find life. It's just to find more of, are these conditions right? right. They're looking so at the conditions mission, rather than, than life. Exactly. Okay. Okay. But one of the, cre- one of the uh, cruxes of this mission is after roughly uh, 35 orbits around the system, over a three and a half year period, it'll then burn its fuel to get a good skim across Callisto, okay. passing within, I think, 250 to 300 kilometers of the surface, okay. heading towards Ganymede, where it'll insert itself in an orbit around Ganymede. And the reason why Ganymede of it is of particular interest is that Ganymede has a very strong magnetic field. It's also partially enveloped by Jupiter's magnetic field. A magnetic field is crucial to a planet to retain its atmosphere. Earth has a very strong magnetic field because we have a molten core of iron and nickel, and that generates a dynamo effect like a bar magnet right. that we got the North and South Poles. We can see the effect when charged energy hits the magnetosphere and is funneled towards the North and the South Poles, interacts with our atmosphere, and produces the aurora. The aurora borealis right. in the north, the aurora australis in the south. Gotcha. Northern Lights. Yes, that's, that's exactly <laughs> it. So Callisto, sorry, Ganymede has got this very strong magnetic field. It's got a very icy surface. It shows some tell, t- telltale signs. There are pockets of liquid underneath that. Don't know what, but Ju- Juice will have those instruments to detect. It's got radar, spectroscopy. It'll do magnetometer readings. It'll do ionospheric readings. It'll do a whole suite of instruments that are on board. And then for a very short time, it'll concentrate all of those on Ganymede, send the data back to us, and then when the fuel is running out, they'll have a little bit left to give it a collision course to smack into Ganymede so that it won't interfere with anything else around there. Okay. Now, that will possibly happen in 2034. Okay, okay. Interesting times. Interesting One times. last thing, because we're just running out of time here. Oh. The, the rocket itself, what size is it? Ariane, it's a, it's a huge rocket. This is a, the power horse of the European Space Agency. Uh, it's hard to draw a comparison with the NASA vehicles that we had or SpaceX, but it would give SpaceX's Falcon uh, 9 and Falcon Heavy a good run for its money. It could do medium to heavy loads into low Earth orbit, or like this one, it could put a payload that can go into inter, interplanetary space quite easily. So it's a, and it, has a, it has a very, very positive track record record. So suffice it, the weather plays ball. There's no reason why Ariane should not have a fully successful launch and get juice where it's supposed to go. What time is that today, you reckon? 1.15pm Irish time. And there are links all over the web. ESA TV, European Space Agency TV, NASA TV, I think, might carry it. But you'll be able to watch it live for free on YouTube as well. All right. Brilliant. Charlie Morris, thanks a million. For Thank you very much. Space expert. <laughs> Thank Morris. you very much. <laughs> Absolutely.